Hello, everyone. Good to be back. We have with us Shristi Mishra today, part of the Voice of the Young series. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Srishti. Okay. Hello and Jaihan to everybody, especially to Sir. Thank you for hosting me. I am really grateful. Actually, this is one of my first interviews that I'm doing. So I'm glad to have you as the first person. I am here to actually talk about, uh, let's start with myself. I'm actually right now a political science honor student at University of Delhi, Kalindi College. Um, my journey to political science has been rather a very different and unpredictable one because I was not a humanities student. Uh, in my class 10th, when I had to choose a stream, I chose medical science. Although I had less intentions of going into medical as a conventional way, I was more interested in biotechnology. And so uh, the batch of 2022 in India has been very tumultuous in the sense that we had to go through an education system overhaul, sort of, because NEP 2020 was, uh, you know, in place. So we gave two board exams and then that was crap. Then we had to give a competitive exam. So I gave my CUET entrance exam, which was being held for the first time only. And I gave it from my science subjects and I got admission into the University of Delhi, uh, which I'm so grateful for. So to explain something about myself, if I had to describe myself in three words, I would do it as a reader, a patriot and an academic, because uh, I am an average reader. I've always read upon different kinds of stuff. Uh, it might sound a little bit boring to people who are not in academics, but uh, I do read history. I do read international politics because my degree is also in tandem with that. And uh, with my major in political science, I chose my I chose my minor as economics because and I I uh, I've read up that sir has a background in economics, a very vast one, so to say. Uh, my uh, you know, intention of taking economics as an adjoining degree was really so to understand what are the economic basis is because I am very interested in understanding what are what is the national developmental process. As a student of political science, I go day in and day out and I'm studying how national growth actually happens and what are the bases of it. And you really can't ignore economics uh, when you talk about the development of India as a country. And uh, we are going ahead and we are hearing about a lot of things that India has become third largest economy and we aim to become the second largest or probably the largest by the end of 2040 or 2030. So economics for me was a choice that I made with various things in my mind. But yeah, I went for economics. As far as my journey to Delhi University was, uh, it was, as I told you, it was a little bit unpredictable because I was not sure whether to go for political science or uh, for my BSc degree in biotechnology, but I got selected for political science and hence I uh, took it for. So uh, during my entire time at Delhi University, I it has really opened, the like it has widened my horizons in the sense that there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, you get the peers you're working, the people you're working with give you an environment that you've never really felt exposed to. And now there are various dimensions at which you can explore and get to know about. So following the stream, I got to intern at the Indian Institute of Public Administration in my second semester of college. And uh, that was a moment of learning for me because I had uh, more or less nothing to do with cyber security. But during my tenure at the IIPA, I worked under Professor Dr. Charu Malhotra and uh, I got to implement a cyber security training for officials of government of India, which was indeed a learning experience for me because I got to know how the cyber security side of government works because uh, in today's day when we are talking about digital India, and we see that, you know, India is moving towards acceptance of uh, technology in a rapid way. Like we have adopted UPI in a very, very rapid pace. So it, uh, the digital era comes with its, its um, negatives as well. Uh, so the cybersecurity aspect of government of India is really, really important. So I got to work with the, the National League Governance Department 
and a ministry that is Meti, the Nodal Ministry for Cybersecurity. So all of that led led to a really great experience uh, for me at IIPA. Recently, I have also been trying my hand at journalism. So I have authored twenty four article with the Asiana Times. Journalism is something that uh, came in tandem to me with my degree of political science because. I've been following a lot of our reputed journalists from India, say Smita Prakash or Palki Sharma, who've been making global headlines. And uh, j- so journalism was something I wanted to explore, and I got the opportunity for it with Asiana Times, and I took it on. My curiosity for national development is something that you know takes me to these different foras. Like recently, I attended uh, Raisina Dialogue. uh it was basically a lot of uh, there were different ambassadors there were global perspectives about what india is doing and the what world is doing basically on global uh, platforms and how are our indicators uh, are we performing well are we perform uh, what are basically the ideas of it mm-hmm. and after that uh, recently actually i've been um, more into my process of academics uh, in tandem with my internships and various experiences I've been working as a content writer for startups as well, and I've been doing uh, all of these things apart from my degree. And uh, that is one thing that I'm really passionate about. And one more thing that I'm really passionate about is teaching. That is precisely why I chose my career goal as taking a PhD in political science. Uh, so I really want to uh, go ahead with professorship or lecturership for the same. uh although being in the delhi university environment it really pushes you to consider civil services as uh, you know something that uh, can be a career option and although i did do my basic research for civil services i think it is a serious task to go ahead with but um, the one service that really uh, you know caught my eye was the indian foreign services and so if i Had to, or if I do consider giving the exam, that will be the my preferred service to go for. As of now, I'm planning to excel in my bachelor's degree so that uh, I can get to uh, sit for the NET exam. Uh, that is what my career scope right now seems like. Recently, I also got accepted into uh, International Council for Human Rights, Peace, and Politics. Uh, it's a UN registered organization that we are working. at from scratch to build actually it's an initiative by uh, one of my connections in linkedin and i duly applied for it and i got in so i'm really looking forward to working on uh, human rights and peace and especially how it correlates with politics because in today's world we're also seeing a lot of dimensions where human rights and politics and peace dialogues are uh, creating a mix wherein we are not able to ensure human rights to a lot of people and i believe politics is the way where we can you know set up the basic ground work so that we can ensure human security at a larger level that that has been my journey so far uh, career wise uh, when i talk about um, just this minute uh, let my me just hang on, hang on hang on hang on where are you in your ba right now yeah. i am in my second year so you just i finished, finished my second year You finished your second year now. You just gave the exam. Yes. So you are, is this a three year for you or four year? Which? No, it's a four year program. Actually, the fourth year is for me is optional. If I choose to take it, I can take it. Otherwise, I can skip as well. But if I do skip it, I'll have to go for masters. Okay, so you're going to That's have right. to decide. But you have done a lot in two years already. I mean, it sounds like you have been very busy, right? Yes, sir. I have been very busy. I am actually kind of a workaholic in that sense. I I feel like I don't do well in idle time, so I keep myself busy with internships and projects and a lot of other Sounds things. Sounds like that. I'm just so, saying. Wait a minute. Where is this student in first year, second year? What I mean, it seems like there's so much you are talking about, and uh, I'm glad that you are working hard and you seem to be enjoying it too. Yes, sir. Yeah. I I I worked for it. I mean, it was my uh, dream actually to be as a political science student. I really wanted to be affiliated with one of the UN organizations, and uh, by the grace of God, I actually got to write an article for UNESCO 
um and i very uh, in so i titled it as trinity of troubles in pakistan because i was studying pakistan at that point so i wrote that article for unesco as well and i'm really grateful that i got another un affiliated opportunity for me to work in in the council and i'm looking forward to it okay tell us what you wrote in that paper on pakistan briefly so yeah sure uh, so i addressed so it's titled trinity of troubles so it is basically three era three uh, areas where pakistan is struggling namely political environmental and their economy so we were talking about that that recently there had been a coup in pakistan where the elected government was uh, you know taken away so that we had discussed and uh, the flash floods that have been happening in pakistan due to the, its border with the arabian sea that was a calamity and the government was incapable to deal with it so that was a point of discussion and economically i think the entire world is aware that the situation of pakistan is not looking very bright uh, in the sense that they are burdened by loans uh, the china uh, the debt trap by china is working uh, you know to break the bones essentially of the pakistani economy so that was an analysis that i did in my research article for unesco okay all right let's continue you're yeah. talking about going to talk about your personal side so let's hear it yeah so i it's through this video i really wanted to you know address that uh, part that i have a lot of people in linkedin reaching out to me where they're like okay how do i get in in this how do i get in in that especially when i worked with iita i actually got a lot of opportunities uh, as in the i worked with the ministry i um, you know uh, headed a report for the y20 i worked for a training docket for the indian forest services so there was like a tandem a lot of opportunities that came with iipa and uh, i just want to like so this is my generation's thing that we are working really hard but we forget to uh, give due credits to our mental health so i really want to talk about that as well that you know in academic life when you're pursuing academics when you're working so hard when you're trying to make a place in the world it happens that you go through a lot of burnouts and it has not been new for me as well because uh for us for the 2022 batch at least 2022 batch at least we have suffered from an overhaul of the uh, education system because not only one we had to give two board exams one in a different format another is in a different format and then all of that was not considered and we had to give a separate uh, you know entrance exam which i think is a good thing but uh, you know it was just too much to bear at that time uh, so we gave a separate competitive exam for us to you know be able to join at the universities that we'd been dreaming of so during that time you know it becomes a hassle to deal with your mental health because you've just given boards and then you have to jump in into another major thing that's going to determine you know your career path and even even this year i think there were some or 14 lakh applications for a mere 70000 seat in the university of delhi so the level of competition is very very high and it kind of uh, you know it's it puts a very huge impact on the mental health of children who are prepared, because they are children they have not even turned 18 they will turn 18 in the due course of their degree so i wanted to address the mental struggles that do happen in the course of degree or in any way uh, so although i have been working with a lot of institutions and i've been working in day in and day out it happens it, it is very essential to recognize the fact that burnouts do happen and there are days that you're going to feel like i don't want to do anything but that's okay you can recover from it and you can get on with a new day and feel better about yourselves that's what i was going to say okay uh, what about your own future i heard you say a phd uh, at some point yes. so why a phd uh so it has been one of my childhood dreams actually uh, i have always been very passionate about the role a teacher plays in a person's life because i have also been blessed with a lot of mentors who have helped me you know cross through different stages of my life and the role and the impact that a teacher has is very very crucial and i am uh, i think i have the capability or the qualities or i'd like to at least build those qualities 
to fulfill the role that a mentor or a teacher does in your life that's why i want to go up with phd because it gives you an an opportunity to serve as associate or, or professor associate assistant and then actual an actual professor so i would like to see for myself that you know all the knowledge and all the wisdom that i have gotten from my mentors from my teachers i really i wanted to pass on to different individuals who you know at some point of their life feel confused or feel misguided so i just it's a simple way of giving it to the community back that's okay. my ideas for phd all right and yes what about your college what has it done for you my college has actually provided me with, okay so i am in i'm in a off campus college it's not technically in uh, the delhi university campus so i was i was a little bit uh, left out about that that you know it's an off campus college i don't know what it can provide there there is a sense of uh, you know dubious mindset in that sense but when i joined my college i actually came to know that the people that you're with matters a lot i have seniors who are guiding me through a lot of things i actually uh, so with my application for iipa of uh, my senior in my debate society who i'm a, which i'm a member of really helped me to get through the applications process and everything like that they really pushed me in my mun journeys wherein so i've i've been a public speaker but i've never really participated i had never really participated in muns so they encouraged me to actually take up portfolios and start speaking you know represent a country delegate do this do that and a lot of my peers have also uh, been very like minded in that sense that they want to work hard and they want to earn their place in academia so the people around me in my college i think that's and my professors actually they've been guiding they've been a, a guiding angels for that matter so that's what my college has given me it's given me my peers my mentors and confidence to actually you know uh, go ahead and apply for those opportunities and if i do get it then work hard for it so when you say off campus you mean it's not in uh, north delhi right kalin yes. kalin it it's technically not in north delhi as in so so in delhi university i think i heard you in the last call you were from saint stephens yes but that was long ago <laughs> <laughs> no but the the structure has more or less remained the same uh, so there is a campus proper campus in vishwavidyalaya so there we have the reputed uh, colleges so to say quote and quote reputed colleges like saint stephens like hindu like miranda so we have all of those colleges and then across delhi we have different colleges as well which are called colloquially called off campus colleges because they are not technically in the campus vicinity right so you don't really get the campus experience and the hostel experience but uh, yeah it is a due part of delhi university so uh, when i so when i got my score for cuet i was really excited so as to what you know what college can i get in and uh, a lot of factors played a role in it but um, so i got kalindi college which is in karol bagh not delhi only it's considered in the north campus but it's not really north campus yes so that was a little bit of an episode where i was like i don't know whether i can do it you know it might i might apply for reshuffling i don't know what peers i'll have so that was an anxiety that i went through but all hail it went great like time and about it went fine enough okay good so you are enjoying the college yes i am very much okay and what tips would you have for young people you said you had some unusual career path to political science and also what tips would you have for young people who are in 11th or 12th uh, yes um so the only i think the there are two things that i really want to tell everybody first will be that it's okay if you have not decided it yet because we in we are in we grow up in an education system where we are told you know that oh you got to decide it in tens that what you're going to do because your stream allocation is going to be there whether you choose science whether you choose commerce is going to have a huge impact on your career that while that's partially true but i would encourage people to not take so much stress regarding it and just make a pragmatic decision which opens up a lot of arenas for you in life 
that is going to be my first choice because I first thing because I was a medical student in my eleventh uh, and twelfth. I studied physics, chemistry, biology, and I have ended up in political science. So that's my thing. I really chose political science because it had something that I wanted to study. Right, I was interested in the subject matter. That's why I chose it. And second of all, uh, the ranking. Second tip that I'm going to do uh, give is the ranking of degrees. Right, please do not care about the rank of your degree because in India we have that system that whether you, if you are doing B Tech, you're the creamy layer. You're the engineers. You're going to make up the best of the things in the world. If you're a doctor, you're going to you know if you're enrolled in MBBS, you're going to do the best things in the world. So I, coming from a medical background, chose a BA honors degree. So I would just like to say that it's not, uh, you know, it's not a step down. It's nothing like that. Just take up whatever field you want to take and work hard at at it. My only agenda of doing so many things at a time is proving sort of a fact that it's that degrees don't, you know, don't decide your worth. What work you're doing with what ethic you're doing it, that's what dictates. And if you don't have interest in a degree, then don't take it. Because we see a lot of people writing engineering exams or MBBS exams just because maybe their parents want to do it, want them to do it, or you know maybe they're under certain certain kind of pressures in the society. So uh, luckily, I've been blessed enough that my parents were never, you know, uh, pressurizing me on the fact that you got to do this or you got to do that. When I chose my degree, it was uh, an absolute happy event for everybody that I got in in Delhi University. And uh, so yeah, just choose a place of work that you really are dedicated to. That would be my two tips. Is Delhi your hometown, or did you come from somewhere to Delhi? Uh, so my uh, birth uh, pura chart is very different. I was born in Gujarat. My father was working there in Gujarat, and my hometown is in UP. It's in Gorakhpur. Okay. And I've been living in Delhi my entire life. <laughs> so okay. it's a mix of a lot of things. Okay, wonderful. All right. Anything else you want to add here? I want uh, to add one uh, thing to this. That uh, so we I have been seeing a narrative of national growth. I'm a huge advocate for national growth and. that's what i'm that's what i want to tell everybody that whatever field you're choosing whatever career you're choosing uh be be very very sure that you want to do it and please find out a way that how you can contribute to the growth of this country because i see a lot of people are moving abroad and that's well for them that's definitely for good opportunities uh, but if we are to reach that economic level if we are to uh, you know uh make india a better place it would require the youth to participate in political economic and every aspect of it so that will be my humble request to everybody that uh, you know whatever field you choose please choose it for yourself first and then somewhere in there please take the nation also into consideration that you at some point of life maybe you know will be able to contribute to the nation that's it okay thank you so much shrishti It was good to hear from you. Thank you, you. thank you, sir. I am really happy to hear a young person uh, root for the country. Okay, that's really the right. Absolutely. Thing. Okay, so let's end it here, and I'll be back Absolutely. to the audience. I'll be back with another young person or an expert soon. Bye till then. Bye, everybody.